Hey there, Papper people. Welcome to my channel, The Lanky Lefty 27 and this is going to be an extra special video today. Trust me. Now, I've made some mistakes in my videos and really in life, and I'm going to go ahead and highlight those today in preparation for this outstanding video. Now, in a previous video, I made some comments about a mask, how it didn't have a quick release, and so, eh, really wasn't that big a deal. It appears it is a big deal, and I made a boo-boo. Amanda Walters writes, just want to say that when you're talking about the quick release versus removing the whole mask for a bathroom visit, you're speaking from a male's perspective. For those of us female here with a full head of hair, it is not so simple. Try one of these reviews with a full wig on and give me your opinion. I hate my hair glued to my neck. It gets so hot to pull the hair through the straps at the back. Amanda, I feel your pain. Now, if I were to look at my overall analytics, I also noticed that I have a 75% male viewership, 25% female viewership. On some videos, this is even 80-20 of males to females. Clearly, I'm making mistakes. <sighs> I'm not pandering enough. And pander I shall. It's said that if you say the name of a female icon several times, magic will happen. Joanna Gaines. Joanna Gaines. Joanna Gaines. Joanna Gaines. Joanna Gaines. Mm, that worked beautifully. So clearly I've done a disservice. We need to check the comments some more to see what exactly women need in a mask. I have my own hunches, I've heard some things, but let's hear it from the source. Sandy Herperger says, I've been wearing the Dreamwear for basically a long time. I'm a female with thin, long hair. The only way I can keep the back from slipping up constantly is by making a loose ponytail and hooking the top strap beneath my ponytail. It still slips, but it's manageable. And then Catherine Smith says, I do the same thing. Long, thin hair, and a slipping mask strap. Virginia for Lovers says, where do they make men like you? Don't misgender me. Susanna J says, I nearly bought that mask you were talking about until uh, the part about the hard plastic. That would bother me like crazy. Not wanting hard plastic. Hmm. Miss Traveler says, the Dreamer would slip off the back of my head. Nancy Ramos says, she's been using CPAP for quite a while now and notice that her mask doesn't stay on anymore and it keeps sliding off even if she tightens the headgear. And it's not comfortable she lays down because her nose hurts. Larry Edwards says, Hi Lanky, as a black male, is there a full face mask designed for the African American people? <laughs> Larry, we're not pandering to you today. And Diana Lance has a fairly long message, but ultimately it says, Hi short haired Jason. Basically she has long, thin hair, her mask pulls up just like all the others. And she says, I need to have a better understanding for the struggle of good hair while wearing CPAP, and that struggle is real. Mary Austin says, I swear I'm losing hair on the top of my head where the top hose is connected. Does anyone else experience hair loss? So some of the problems we've identified that women have, and long haired dudes. We have strap lines on the face. We have long, thin hair, probably getting tangled. We have balding from the head straps. We have pain from the headgear. We have hard plastic digging into the nose. And last but definitely not least is the mask strap sliding up because of the long thin hair. So now that I'm pretty much joined the gains, let's check this out. So Amanda, I'm gonna do you one better. Instead of trying on every mask and showing you what mask works best with how to adjust your hair, look, I'm a new female. I don't know how to adjust my hair right. Uh, as a male, I knew how to fling around this, <laughs> fling around this stuff that I already had but I'm a new female, this hair is new to me. Not really sure how to do it yet. Here's the one thing I can tell you though. With a full face mask, kind of all bets are off. Almost all full face masks have more or less this des design. We have straps on the top and we have straps for the bottom. They're pretty much all like this. So let me show you how I would solve this problem. And if you have a better solution, please list it in the comment section down below. So once we get our hair all situated in the mask. All right, that's on pretty well. By the way, this is a Fisher and Paykel by Terra. Uh, it's Kind of a standard mask for anything. All right, we're gonna go ahead and plug in. Now, instead of taking the entire mask off to use the restroom, with a full face mask, we're just gonna go ahead and unplug this and just leave the mask on. There's really no need to take the whole thing off. With this, you can undo the straps so you can get a little air in, but there's really no need to take the entire mask off if you're gonna be using the restroom. This can pretty much be done with any mask. I know this is kind of a cop out, but full face mask, this is pretty much the way they are. Now, this pretty much works the exact same if you're like a Disneyland soccer mom type. Pretty much just get your hair set up exactly how you want it, put the mask on, just more or less leave it on, and unplug it at the tube if you need to get up and use the restroom. So this is only if you need a full face mask. The only time I would use a full face mask, this is for guys also, though this video is definitely not for you. So this is just for the women. If you actually really need a full face mask, usually you have a deviated septum, 
or chronic nasal congestion. If you can breathe through your nose during the day, you can probably get away with a nasal mask at night. Now, what is the best nasal mask for females or everyone? It's gonna be something that the strap doesn't leave marks, doesn't pull on your hair, it's easy to get on and off, it's light. Hmm. Hold on, I have an overwhelming desire to work on my core. So the best mask for women, the Bleep Dreamway mask. Now here's the one problem with this mask that you're gonna experience, and I'm just gonna tell it to you right now. The problem with this is it's not made by ResMed, it's not made by Respironics, and it's not made by Fisher & Paykel. Those are the three biggest manufacturers of CPAP equipment. They ain't one of them, so they have a hard time getting into DMEs, and DMEs really don't want another company in there because it's quite an honestly, it's a pain in the butt as far as inventory goes. But this is probably the answer to all of your prayers. And why do I say that? Well, let me show you. Every single problem that we discussed that is a problem for females and females only, but actually guys too, is solved by this mask. Now I can tell you're very excited. So let's talk about the sponsor of this video, which is CPAPsupplies.com. Now one of the things you'll notice as I'm discussing the Bleep Dreamway mask is that it comes with dream ports. Now dream ports are disposable. Oh my gosh, that could cost some money. Well, not really. It's actually seen the exact same as a mask cushion replacement. Are you having a problem getting a prescription Description for this for your insurance to cover that is no problem because cpapsupplies.com has an rx service well they will actually go out and hunt down your physician and get them to get a prescription for you they will also do all the legwork to get you qualified through insurance sleepapsupplies.com could not make this any easier for you even if you're paying for this out of pocket if you find it cheaper on another website they will match that price you always know you're getting the best deal and if you check out their coupon code section you can very very often find even a cheaper price a much greater discount and if you don't find a coupon you can always use coupon code lefty16 as that is always active please check out the sponsor of this video cpapsupplies.com okay as i was just discussing in the advertisement these because you probably skipped through it you should actually check it out because it has really important information. <clears throat> These are gonna be disposable. So that is the one part of this that is probably, if I were to say there is a downside to this mask, that these are disposable. And once you put them on, they're pretty much on. But once they're on, they're pretty much on. So leaking is a thing of the past. You do not have to worry about leaks whatsoever. And I'm just gonna go ahead and show you that because it kind of speaks for itself. Now I'm gonna be completely honest with you. This is actually a little difficult. It takes, there's a little learning curve to it. Um, I've learned, I have a big nose. I'm a woman with a giant nose. So I need to cut these to my own specifications. Now I want you to see exactly how these goes on because this confuses people. Now I wanna be very clear about something. These, they fit under your nose kind of like this and the adhesive comes up over the side. So you can see nothing is actually going up into your nose right here. It's completely flat. My hair is getting in my way and it's getting in my mouth. Now that's way too much. This is too much for me. I don't need that, but I do need a little bit to shore up on the bottom. So what I've learned in the past is to cut these kind of at an angle and I can get the best of both worlds here. So now I'm gonna use this little extra piece to shore up spots that it doesn't quite cover for me just because my nostrils are so big as a, as a female. Okay, so now let's put this part in place first. So we're gonna hold it right here to our nostril. Push down, and I'm gonna tell you right now, I'm not prepping this right. I'm supposed to be using alcohol on my nose. I'm not using it, so I might get leaking. I'm gonna to try to do my best, but these, when you get them on right, and take a little time to do it, completely leak free. So for me, I usually need to shore up right around here by the crease of my nose. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that right now. If you're fortunate enough to have a smaller nose, you probably won't have to do this, but I have learned in the past that I do. It's kind of cool, the shape actually kind of fits there. And now we'll go ahead and get the other side. Boy, the life of a woman, I'm telling you, am I right? Am I right, ladies? Not easy being a lady, not easy. Being a lady. Okay, now this thing looks like it goes in either way, but if you look at this really carefully, you can see this side is offset a little bit that way. So that means that's the part that's gonna go towards my face. That gives me a little bit of space for it to clear my lip. It's never really been a problem anyway, but now you basically just pop these into place. And really, uh, realistically, once these things are in, they kind of stay in. There is a quick release tab on them, sort of. Um, I don't really recommend it because I have actually mistakenly pulled this plastic ring off and then it is an absolute nightmare to get back on. So check this out. If I need to use a restroom, I simply unhook here. 
This, I mean, it looks like it's hanging off my face, and it is. I'm ready to go. There's no headgear I have to deal with. Nothing's pushing on my head. I have no mask lines. I have no strap lines. This is, and this thing is not gonna leak all night long. And I can also take my extremely decorative pillow that really improves the aesthetics of this room that my husband doesn't appreciate fully. And I can take this and I can actually lay with my face in the cushion and it doesn't bother me at all. Tell me another mask you can pretty much sleep on your face with. Too bad the dudes don't know about this, right ladies? Bro fist, or actually bra bump, bink. Now I know my ladies out there are discriminating shoppers, so let's go ahead and put some pressure through this and see what the leak sounds like. Now normally I do my bass checks at 10 centimeters of water pressure, but we're ladies, we do everything a little tougher. So this is 12 centimeters of water and you could hear the lack of leaky. And look, I could lay my face just like this. There's absolutely nothing, there's no hard plastic to push into my face. The Bleep Dreamway mask is the only mask that feels like you have absolutely nothing on. Now if I were to use the restroom, I just unplug this, go and use the restroom as I'm free to do so. There's no headgear to deal with. And when I come back, I just plug this back in. And because I have it on Smart Start, give it a couple puffs and it's back on. Now all joking aside, the Bleep Dreamway mask is the best mask available right now, in my opinion, as far as a nasal mask. Has a couple cons being the application of these, but once you get it right, there seriously is no leaking and you are not restricted on how you sleep. You have no mask lines. You have nothing in your hair. You have nothing pulling on the back of your neck. Nothing to worry about like that. You can literally have a head of a watermelon. It doesn't matter, this will fit right on. Now, the one thing I haven't thought of until just this exact moment is if you don't have a nose. That's really rare, I'm guessing. So one last thing I wanted to share with you because this is dedicated to my female viewers in a desperate attempt for pandering, I would like to point out another YouTube content creator. It is Breathless in Bed Vlogs. Now I've been subscribed with her since she had less than 100 subscribers. She is currently at 494 subscribers. Can we, before Mother's Day, get her channel up to 1,000 subscribers? How cool would that be for her? I wanna say I found her about two or three years ago, something like that. Um, the reason I like her content is one, the, the very first video I found is titled Sleep Apnea is Effing Expensive. Um, that was the very first video I saw and just the frustration in her voice, it was something that really resonated with me, is what I see uh, going on in the CPAP community. So if you do head on over to Breathless in Bed Vlogs, maybe leave a comment, subscribe to her, and watch some of her videos. They're, they're, they're very cool, I really, really do enjoy them. All right, hopefully you liked this video and it was helpful. If so, please subscribe if you haven't already and give this video a thumbs up. Also leave a comment in the comment section down below. I'd appreciate that. Please also look at the description box. I have a ton of links in there. All right, thank you for watching, bye. Thank you to anyone watching this video, but an extra special thank you to my top level Patreon supporters and a low level. Thanks buddy to Sarvesh Joshi, Stuart Hetherington, and Mona Swearingen. Thank you and thanks buddy.